Well, the long-term future of Cedar Fair has, in fact, seemingly been decided. Hello there, guys. My name is Coach Child, Donkster Born, but built for Theme Park Factual Entertainment, and welcome to a Theme Park Newsroom update where today we're going to be talking about Cedar Fair. Now, of course, this is all about their long-term strategy. So this is according to a Blue Loop article, so I'll link that in the description down below. But today we're going to be talking about the statistics on the article and what excites me about this article, as well as sharing you my thoughts about this article information as well. So, before we get started guys, make sure you like the video if you've loved it. Make sure you comment down below your thoughts and opinions. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on this. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell so you never miss any more thrilling YouTube content. I've had the loose women on all morning, so uh, I've been enjoying my television entertainment before today's filming. And let's get into this video from Cedar Fair's long-term strategy. So according to this article from Blue Loop, again, linked in the description down below, Cedar Fair have unveiled its long-term strategy to invest in new rides, events and attractions, also investing its response to COVID-19 and results for Q2 2020. Following a record 2019, the company confirmed in a presentation to investors that 2020 was disrupted by the outbreak of COVID-19, with parts closing on the 14th of March 2020. Therefore, the first half of the year had just 129 operating days compared to the 827 operating days in the first half of 2019, and 956 operating days originally planned for the first half of 2020. The 84% decline in operating days resulted in 9 million fewer visitors, with net revenues of $560 million compared to a $503 million in 2019. Out-of-part revenues were $18 million for the first half of this year compared to $64 million for the first half of last year. Cedar Fair has taken proactive steps to reduce operating expenses during the pandemic, eliminating nearly all seasonal and part-time labour costs suspending advertising and marketing expenses and reducing general and administrative spending. As for consumer initiatives, Cedar Fair have extended 2020 season pass privileges through the end of 2021 season and added enhancements to its mobile app technology season passes accounted for approximately 53% of its total attendance in 2019. Now, focus group studies show that Cedar Fair's guests are looking for something for everyone and all types of people, ages and interests. Guests are willing to turn off the tech for unique experiences and are interested in authentic entertainment that could be local with a sense of place. A market survey has revealed that Cedar Fair has the lowest hit amongst groups with the fastest population growth rates. Key opportunities exist within several demographic segments across multiple parks. Older non-families, families with young children, millennial non-families, Asian American and US Hispanic households and high income households. In the near term, there is a priority to focus on the tourism market in Southern California. The long term strategy involves investing in new rides, events and attractions and enhancing its parks while preparing for the 2021 season. Cedar Fair may reactivate certain capital projects over the next 12 months, resulting in capital spending. The company will also broaden park offerings and improve guest service and add something new in every park every year. Traditional rides such as roller coasters and water attractions still play an important role. Cedar Fair plans to use more limited duration events with its seasons of fun model driving an urgency to visit and guests are looking for even more immersive experiences like Forbidden Frontier at Cedar Point. F and B is expected to play a key role with Cedar Fair hiring executive chiefs and additional culinary talent at each park and since 2011 F and B revenues have increased by more than 50% with F&B per cap up by more than 35%. The company has also revealed more about its accommodations in its total hotel rooms growing to more than 2,300 from 1,900 over the past eight years. The total luxury RV sites increased to more than 600 as well. And in addition, Cedar Fair opened uh, outdoor sports center in 2017 with performance pacing well ahead of its original pre-former model 
Uh, the indoor centre, which spent in January 2020, has strong initial bookings prior to the coronavirus crisis. So there we go, that is looking at the stats behind these reports, these presentation reports on the long-term strategy of Cedar Fair Entertainment Company. Now, from the sounds of it, it seems like they want to try and press ahead with capital projects. Now, whether that means acquiring new parks, which sometimes can be considered, you know, capital projects, but in terms of capital projects within the chain already, in terms of new roller coasters, new rides and attractions, new experiences, new... Um, you know, different entertainment factors as well. You know, these are different things that are going to be taken into account. And these are the different things I want to try and push ahead with. Now, they said in there about Southern California, what three parks in the Cedar Fair chain are from California? You've got California's Great America, you've got Knott's Berry Farm, and you've got Gilroy Gardens. So it's Southern California that's the focus. So it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen with that. I know it said specifically Southern California, but I'm looking more of a California perspective. You guys can pick out, you know, which parts we're talking about here. But in terms of the whole California state, we're looking here at California's Great America. That was kind of to be expected because they had that whole master plan over the last over the next few years with things like a hyper being rumored. Uh, and different projects and different coasters being rumored for the park. So I'm not surprised that California comes up and California's Great America is not one of them. Uh, Knott's Berry Farm, obviously they've got their rumored Ghost Town expansion in a couple of years. So that'll be one of the capital projects that maybe goes ahead uh, in a couple of years time. And Gilroy Gardens, now that one is a very interesting one. I've not really heard much recent stuff from this park. Um, so it'll be very interesting to see what happens with that and what they do with that. So... It's going to be interesting to see what happens with that. Now, of course, the fact that they've said they're going to spend more capital on new rides, attractions, shows, entertainment, makes me think they're going to invest more in all of the Cedar Fair Park. Something new each and every year, which, you know, gets me really excited. Yes, it's the Six Flags principle that many people have said have led to their financial downfall. The fact they're still adding things in, though, makes them feel like, you know, they're not financially unstable. And... You know, the fact that they could be adding something new every year to the Cedar Fair theme parks uh, in terms of their long-term strategy gets me really excited because you look at the parks that haven't received major investments over the last few years, Worlds of Fun, Valley Fair, um, obviously Dawn is going to kind of break that chain in 2021 with their new Gravity Group wooden shuttle coaster. Uh, Michigan's Adventure, yes, they're getting a Camp Snoopy next year, which delayed from this year, but again, still no coaster for a long period of time. Um, obviously, in terms of other capital projects, you could be looking here at Cedar Point's next roller coaster project, whenever that is. It could be 2022 with the Frontier Land markers going ahead. Kings Island, their next coaster project on the Vortex site, that could be one of them. The Volcano Blast Coaster replacement at King's Dominion, that's considered a capital project. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of capital projects that we've seen early signs of and, you know, we've known about for a little while now that looks like they're going to be pressing ahead as planned. So, uh, things like Cedar Point's next coaster, King's Island's next coaster, uh, King's Dominion's replacement for Volcano, you know, that looks to be all pressing ahead. And hopefully some other parts are going to be thrown into the mix and get their own investments. Is Valley Fair getting the inverted coaster we've longed for for years? Um, I guess we'll have to see with that one. But, you know, very, very interesting and very, very bright signs from Cedar Fair with those reports. So, again, big shout out to Blue Loop for the information. I'll link the article in the description down below. And for now, guys, my name is Coast Channel. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Thank you very much. Massive shout out to Falco Flair in this video. If you want a shout out or if you want to suggest a video in the comments down below, a video idea, comment it down below. I've got loads of video ideas that you guys have been sending in over the last few months. They're all saved up, they're ready to be recorded. And uh, yeah, once the news is out of the way, I can start recording your suggestions. Uh, but for now, guys, thank you very, very much. My name is Coast Channel. Thank you very much. Keep living the coast of life. And I'll see you guys in the next video very, very soon. Take care, guys. Have an awesome day.